This video is a recap of a lecture in the Conservation Applications of LIDAR Data Workshop Series funded by the Minnesota Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund. These workshops were presented by the University of Minnesota in collaboration with the Board of Water and Soil Resources, the NRCS, and the DNR. This lecture recap is on terrain analysis. It's the second in a training module series and it assumes you have understood the basics of using LIDAR which was the first training module. This material was developed by Joel Nelson at the University of Minnesota Department of Soil, Water, and Climate. And as I said these are workshops that are in a series of modules. The first one being the basics which I hope you've completed this being the terrain analysis, and the subsequent ones are the hydrological applications, engineering, wetland mapping, and forest and ecological applications. This is a recap of a lecture delivered as part of a class which had course logistics and student introductions. The objectives of this lecture and this content is to understand the LIDAR DEM data and how to create the terrain attributes and in, to interpret those terrain attributes. Terrain analysis. Now to start terrain analysis we have to make sure that you understand the earlier lecture on the basics of LIDAR and understand about raster and raster processing that that data is processed by the Minnesota the LIDAR data as it's flown from the vendors is processed by the Minnesota DNR and made available through the MinGeo website where you can download it that was covered in that earlier lecture and that earlier lecture helped discuss some of the visualization and management processes that would be used to use the LIDAR data Shifting now to terrain, our topic at hand, the terrain management, we need to do some pre-processing before we begin doing any terrain calculations. This pre-processing involves pit filling or sink filling, filtering as necessary, and some hydrological conditioning. Now this pre-processing is separate, is additional processing, beyond what the Minnesota DNR does to prepare the, the DEM, prepare the LIDAR data. This is pre-processing specific to our terrain analysis. Now the first concept is pit filling. When you create a raster from the very detailed LIDAR measurements, there are certain areas in the landscape where there would be a small pit or a sink or a peak and that there is a process that you can apply where you could fill or level out those, uh, uh, those, uh, those nuances, those detailed nuances, and you would be doing that uh, depending on the landscape and the data. Now, what this, what this means is that we're trying to route water on the landscape. That's what our terrain, one of the uses of our terrain model would be, and that in order to route water, if there's a, a sink or a pit, a small little sink or pit, water will flow into that and not flow out in our, uh, for our analysis. So that we have to fill that anomaly. And some of those are, are real on the landscape, but that with enough rain they'll fill and, f and flow out. So that we need to process that, uh, that, that data to remove those anomalies or those erroneous values. Now, you have to understand that this is altering the landscape so that we could more accurately reflect the flow at higher flood stages. Now, this is an example of the pit filling where we have a, a pit here or a depression that is, it's not clear how the, the water is, is moving on the landscape as it's moving in, it, there are a series of sinks, and so we'll, we'll fill those and we'll, we'll route the water on the landscape as if all the small little depressions are, do not exist. The second process is that, <clears throat> that of 
a low pass or a high pass filter where we're actually smoothing out doing a neighborhood averaging that there are anomalies within the data that might very well be an error or could very well be some small little attribute but that we're trying to route water on the landscape and so we, we need to do to some small degree generalize the landscape so that we could accurately model it so this low pass filter actually would smooth it out or average you could also take a minimum or a maximum or other uh, there are other options for you when you're doing this calculation the averaging would be the common one but you're passing a moving window over this raster the entire raster surface and you're using the neighboring cells to to decide what you do with your center cell this is useful for removing spurious data as I said because there are errors and little anomalies but it's also smoothing out some small little local variations and helping with connectivity Now you want to remember this just like pit filling is to some degree dumbing down of the data so uh, so that we're we're and we're creating sort of a fuzzy effect where we're we're uh, removing some of the detail but we're trying to remove the detail very carefully so that we can model the landscape in a a little bit more general sense. With the LiDAR data we're presented with such level of detail that we have to consider these these issues of pit filling and filtering. Now the hydrological conditioning improves the flow through. For example there could be a, a, um, a culvert here in the uh, under this road that is not seen by the LiDAR so we would burn in streams or uh, deal with bridge obstructions remove bridge obstructions and create break lines uh, at a water's edge uh, rather than allowing the the detail that's revealed from the lidar to create um, uh, a more gradual transition well we would, could establish a break line to so say the water starts here uh, uh, abruptly and this would would help us more accurately model the flow of water and in this case we're actually improving the accuracy of the the layer the pit filling and the filtering we're actually sort of dumbing it down here we're actually improving it by adding some other external knowledge to try and improve the uh, the the surface so it can more accurately reflect how the flow or drainage is is represented in this this surface now this does vary obviously at the that scale so when you're at a very small scale covering a huge area uh, the flow drainage uh, could be represented very generally at a very detailed level you might be representing a lot more of the dendritic nature of the the flow path now terrain analysis what is it Terrain analysis is, is a, a well-established science that uh, relies heavily on GIS where we're using digital elevation, geospatial information to model the landscape. And from this model, we're able to create a process that's repeatable so that we're able to run different scenarios through it. And it really came to fruition because of the advances in the, the GIS and remote sensing technology that allowed us to collect very detailed information about the landscape and to create a computer model of that so that we could, we could create different scenarios to understand the, how the soils are dealing with the, uh, how the, uh, the soil properties uh, in, in terms of the terrain context or the vegetation or wildlife or in our case the hydrological features. This concept had early pioneers and has been around for many years and our, our concern in this uh, uh, lecture series is about the hydrological mapping but the soil mapping in terms of erosion would be an example would be a very important uh, aspect of terrain modeling to understand where are the soils most erodible because of the steep slopes wildlife habitat those wildlife that would appreciate a higher uh, location or a lower or some slope uh, that there would be wildlife um, uh, issues and many other uh, ways of applying terrain modeling but the, the advantage here is that LIDAR has now helped us create such a detailed surface 
in the DEM, the one meter DEMs that we're able to uh, create much, much more accurate models of the physical landscape. The, the other advantage of this terrain modeling is that it's very repeatable so that we're able to create this model, cover large areas, and repeat this process, whether we're describing soils, vegetation, water, so on, to, to repeat this and analyze it with different scenarios. And our results aren't just numbers, in, uh, but they're also spatial. So it's the soil erosion at a particular location uh, or water flow at a particular location. And it could be uh, done at a at a various different scales, so that it could very nicely support our conservation planning processes. Here's an example of a terrain uh, uh, analysis where we did a walking survey that which cost which we were able to estimate the the ditch mile, the cost per ditch mile, and when we looked at replicating that over a large landscape it would cost many many thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to create the detailed terrain um, analysis from a walking survey and that if we were able to do that using LIDAR detailed uh, raster layers and the terrain variables derived from that if we were able to do that with the, with GIS that we're able to establish things at a, at a very large scale <clears throat> or at a very small scale, a county-wide, uh, that could be done very, very quickly. So it's far less time-consuming and resource-intensive. Now, it still does depend on some uh, ground-truthing, verifying things on the ground, and there, it is not a, totally a computer-based, uh, office-based analysis, but it's, it is able to cover much more ground by by having small field measurements and using the remote sense data to accurately model a landscape. Now terrain analysis falls into two different categories. One is a primary, uh, and the primary is the, the easy ones to understand, the aspect, which way the hill is facing, how steep the hill is, the slope, the catchment area, that is the area uh, that the area that collects water, um, and uh, or the profile or the plan curvature. So basic features on the landscape which can be derived from the elevation data. And the secondary is combining some of those to understand some key indices that are, that are appropriate for our analytical processes. That would be stream index, stream power, those sorts of things. And that these are uh, able to reveal the spatial variability of these variables to help us plan. This is a little example of our process here. In, in a simple sense, we take the point cloud, we create the DEM, and the DNR does this. Then we have to do the pre-processing, which is down here, where we're filling the sinks and the pits, uh, and the filtering and the conditioning, and then we wind up to calculate the, the uh, terrain attributes. Now the first primary that we need to talk about is aspect, which way the hill is facing. So we would use the DEM to calculate aspect. And we'd run a simple command on the raster surface to say, uh, cell by cell, which cardinal direction is this cell facing? Is it north, south, east, or west? And we could classify that into eight categories, uh, or four categories, or 16, but uh, or have actual degrees, uh, 1 to 360. So which way the hill is facing. And this is used for many different purposes, not just hydrological modeling, but also for uh, wildlife or for ET, uh, evapotranspiration, or, or uh, various ecological measures of abundance. The second that we need to talk briefly about is how steep the hill is. So aspect is which way, slope is how steep. And steep has a direct uh, correlation with the water uh, as water moves downhill. So as we understand the slope, we can understand um, which way water is moving with the aspect and then how steep or how rapidly the velocity and the runoff rate could be calculated from.
our slope. And this is a simple raster calculation where it derives a surface from the DEM, just like the aspect. But in this case, this could be percent or it could be in degrees. Uh, so it uh, describes the rise over run, the slope. And here's an example of the slope in uh, Blue Earth County where we've calculated how steep the, the land is, cell by cell. You can see here it, it's fairly flat and as we move close to the, the stream banks you see the, the banks of the stream. You can also see some slope along the ditches and some slope along some areas where their water is collecting on the landscape. But here where it's flat and here's where the white is where there's a steep slope. It's a um, 45 degrees or 35 degrees, uh, some sort of uh, degrees or percent measurement. Okay, now slope, the, the value of it, as I mentioned, velocity and runoff, but it also helps us as we're modeling the, the precipitation, how precipitation moves, uh, where we could use it in our vegetation analysis and geomorphology and water content, uh, soil water content. Uh, clearly the soil water content would be different at the higher on a, on a steep slope than at the lower, uh, and as well as land capability class, what the land could be used for.